I'm Lauren with IndoorGardening.com and today we're going to talk about five of the most invasive houseplants. Houseplants are generally chosen to be reproduced and cloned because they are so quick at growing because they're such hardy plants. This generally leads to most of the houseplants being invasive in their areas. It's also more likely to be approved for cultivation if there is a lot of a plant available versus if it's a rare, hard to find plant, then most likely they're not gonna be able to pick it up, take it out and sell it for a lot of money. Um, they want to reproduce it and make sure that there is a lot out there. So what this means for us as houseplant collectors is that a lot of the plants that we bring into our homes are considered invasive where they are and even more of them we plant them in other areas they will grow prolifically and become invasive in other areas these are five plants that are guaranteed to grow crazy in your yard and make you regret ever planting them there First up, and if you are native to Florida, you probably already know this one, Tradescantia. In particular, Tradescantia zebrina. In very warm, tropical, humid environments, especially down south, this plant will be put outside in people's yards and, or it might even just fall out of planters that you have on your porch. You know, you get the decorative hanging planters and you hang them up on your porch and then you're trimming and cutting. You just let the trimmings fall to the ground. No big deal, right? Um, unfortunately, this plant will take a node, it will root, and then it will run all over your yard. It will just go absolutely insanely crazy. And I feel this is something that we really need to discuss if we're putting our plants outside for the spring and the summertime, because in the proper environment, this can cause a lot of problems long-term. I know people that are still digging Tradescantia out of their yard, even though they have lived there for years, they've been battling it for years, and they didn't even plant it there. It was previous homeowners. So it's one of those, this causes long-term issues for more than one person as well type of thing. And it is a very variety gracious plant. Great for an inside house plant. Fantastic that they can thrive so well. Um, just in our yard, when we're bringing our house plants outside from inside, we definitely need to be aware, um, not just of what's going on with our plants, but what is happening in our yard when we do that so that we can take care of it right away. If we paid attention to that one little Tradescantia cutting, then we could pull it up, pick it up right away, and it would not have a chance to become this seven year problem for other people <laughs> or for ourselves if we stayed there. So this plant um, doesn't accidentally get put in people's yards. Majority of the time, it's actually placed there on purpose. Epipremnum, also known as pothos, is a very, very popular plant. What people like to do with this plant is size up the leaves. They want this plant to get mature really quickly so it can grow bigger leaves, have fenestrated leaves, and they can see the gorgeousness of them. And they are absolutely stunning. But in order to do this, especially if people live in a very tropical area, they will plant them outside, up against trees, up against poles. The plant will then creep out across the yard. It will climb up the trees. It will climb up homes it will do damage to these things and it will basically choke out anything that it is living on um, and take over the entire area. So yes, you will get those big fenestrated leaves, but if you do not keep up on the maintenance of it, um, it will take over your entire yard and it will just keep going. You see something similar to this when you have it in a household setting, you will notice that it will reach out, it will climb up a wall, or it might gather onto another plant or some type of a shelf, and it will just kind of go crazy, creep in, looking for things for it to climb and take over. That is in its nature. And it makes an amazing house plant for this. It's just something we just have to be aware about when we're planting our plants outside. Because yes, as houseplant collectors, we do have goals, but we also have to be aware of the long-term impact of uh, how we meet our goals. So planting this particular plant outside is not a good idea. Plant it in a pot if you can. If you want to have it outside, keep it in a pole. You can get these really big stakes. You can get boards. You can even plant it in a pot with a tree and have it climb that way if you want. Um, but just tossing it out in the yard and letting it climb up a tree or your home is probably not the best idea simply because it is literally invasive into those things as well as into your yard. 
Next up, Monstera is very similar to the Epipremnum. It is another climbing plant that is very, very invasive and destroys what it climbs. So a lot of people will take this plant and they will put it on a pole and they want it to climb. If it cannot climb, then it will creep out and crawl across the yard. So a lot of people will place it near something where it can climb. A lot of times what will happen is when people go and plant these in their yard, they will try to plant it up against a very large tree so that it can climb up that way, not knowing that it will actually destroy the tree that it's climbing on. Um, and then they will also try to plant it up against their fencing, also going to be destroyed, and then you guessed it, their houses. A lot of people will go and they will want to have these very, very significant, very distinctive looking monstera leaves all along the wall of a house. And yes, it does look amazing, but unfortunately, Monstera roots do not stop growing. They continue to grow through whatever. <laughs> they don't stop. They will go up, they will go in, they go all around, and they are a huge difficulty to remove once you have them established, um, which makes them fantastic houseplants. Yet another trait, once they start growing and once they're established, they're good to go. It's very, very difficult to kill a Monstera in a home. Um, unfortunately, it's also very difficult Difficult to kill them in your yard. They just stick around. So it is a very, very bad idea to plant them in your yard unless you're going to be keeping them contained in some type of a pot. You can even plant them like I talked about with the Epipremnum. You can plant them in a pot with a tree. You can get big stakes. Um, you can get huge beams if you want them to be that large. You just have to stay on top of them and make sure that they are not going elsewhere if you are to do this. And when you're placing them on your porch this summer, when you bring them out, you definitely want to pay attention as to where you are placing them and make sure that they're not going to be climbing up your home. Make sure that they're not rooting themselves off your decking and just pay attention to where they're growing and how they're growing so you don't end up having a plant that's going to take over your entire yard, especially if you were living down south or in a tropical area. Um, pretty much the only thing that would kill this plant is snow. So if you're living in a snowy area, it probably wouldn't be too bad. But if you're living in a toasty warm area, this plant this plant will not die. You will be stuck with it for all eternity. So, <laughs> which sounds great until you actually have to be out there chopping it down and then it's not so fun. This next one is probably going to come as a surprise to anybody not living in Australia. So everybody else, um, I am sorry. <laughs> Spider plants, Chlorophytum cosmosum, very, very popular houseplant, one of the first houseplants ever, and it's because they were so invasive that they became a houseplant. They were very easy to just pick one and take it and share it among other people, share it among friends, but unfortunately, when you plant them in the ground, they will create spiderettes and they will plant themselves next to each other, create more and more and more and then all of a sudden you have an entire field of nothing but spider plants because they grow so big and so bushy so prolifically with very thick rhizomes for roots they block out everything else that wants to grow there you won't have anything else able to grow there so that is unfortunately something that australia is dealing with and what a lot of other folks who have decided to plant them in their yard um, are having to deal with as well so be wary, especially if you have a lot of spring and summer weather, you definitely want to be paying attention as to where those little spiderettes are falling and where you're dropping little pieces of them because they will definitely keep growing. Um, spider plants are one of those plants that if you cut them at the very base of the root, they will just sprout up a whole new set of foliage and they will just continue to grow. So you can chop them all back and they will just grow back really, really prolifically. Um, the only thing that can stop them is being continually cut back and dug up and not being allowed to mature enough to make those spiderettes. And it is very, very difficult to get rid of a plant that is fully mature and an entire field of these things. So um, definitely just a word of warning and not something a lot of folks think of. And it's a very, very common plant. So I'm kind of surprised it's not talked about more often, but definitely one that we felt worth mentioning here. This next one is not talked about very much either, Boston ferns. If you're in the Pacific Northwest, then you probably thought of this already. 
ferns spread through spores and then Boston ferns are one of those types of ferns that will actually spread through creeping rhizomes. So they will have their little tendrils creeping out and they will, like spider plants, pop up a whole bunch of brand new little fern babies next to them. And these ferns get huge. They don't stay tiny. They are grown all over the place. A lot of times you will see them on people's porches. You will have lots of big, lush, fast growing, healthy, beautiful ferns. And they will grow on people's porches and hang them. Lots of people find them so common that they just throw them away at the end of the season. Or they'll just bring them in their homes, which is fantastic. But what other folks like to do, especially if you are in the northern hemisphere is plant them in your yards because ferns are big and beautiful and they're a symbol especially in the pacific northwest everybody seems to love ferns out here um, but when you plant them in your yard they spread prolifically and because they get these huge mounding rhizomes and because they can spread so quickly either through their spores or through their tendrils you're going to end up with way more than just one plant and it can spread across your neighbor's yards it can spread for miles um, so you're going to end up giving a lot of other people a boston fern as well if you end up planting one of these in your yard bring these plants outside you definitely want to pay attention to whether they are creating spores you would check the underside of the leaves and see if they have any spores down there and see where they're at if they're going to be maturing and spreading via wind while they're out there. Um, another thing to consider is if you are going to put them in a pot are their tendrils going to run over? Are they going to end up planting little plants around the pot as well? Or will they run off of your deck? Um, when you dump them in your compost pile at the end of the season, if you are one of those types that just wants to get rid of it at the end of the season and not try to overwinter it, because ferns overwintering can be difficult, um, be aware that they may not stay dead, that they might make a whole bunch of Boston ferns in your compost pile. And they are heavy feeders. They will take a lot of the nutrients from your compost. So just be aware there are consequences to Boston ferns and they are considered an invasive species and they can cause you a lot of problems. Big, beautiful, bushy ferns grow prolifically, make amazing houseplants, bad for the yard. Hopefully this made you consider the placement of your plants um, when you're putting them on your porch, not just necessarily for aesthetic reasons, but for long-term reasons. And hopefully this makes you kind of look around your yard twice and think about exactly what you're going to be planting in your yard. Um, just because they are available and they're inexpensive and they're decorative plants, or you happen to have them on hand, doesn't necessarily mean that they would be great for your yard for the long-term or wouldn't cause you more problems for the long-term. Make sure you check out indoorgardening.com while you wait for our next video. There's lots of information there for you. We're always happy to help. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!